Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing as well as analysing tech news, which as usual has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. Hope you're all having a good day. We have lots of stuff to get through here, and the first thing I'd really like to discuss, and it seems you guys do too, given the number of emails and uh, tweets I had about this, and that is AMD will have Microsoft attending their financial day, which is taking place in just a few days' time. So what we expect for AMD's financial day is they will be revealing key details of the second generation of RDNA, also known as Narve 2X. But these rumours from Reddit tell us that Microsoft will be joining them along with Phil Spencer, basically talking about like a deeper collaboration and also how uh, this will benefit the next generation Xbox as well as cloud gaming. So given these rumours will be either true or false in just a few days' time, I figure I'll do a quicker analysis today, and then obviously when the financial day uh, finishes, we can actually have a better understanding what's going on from AMD. Hopefully, if these rumours are right, we'll have a lot of details which will be publicly released, so we can do a much deeper analysis. And obviously, if it turns out to all be false then I wouldn't have wasted lots of your time. I would like to take away a few things, though. The first is that they'll be showing off their ray tracing solution, and allegedly it's going to be between 30 and 50% more efficient than RTX 20, which is pretty impressive. RDNA 2 is apparently built exclusively for Microsoft and high-power Radeon GPUs, it includes a deep learning AI for upscaling, animation interpolation, and NPC intelligence. Turn 10 is the powerhouse for it, allegedly, and you can read more on screen yourself of how ray tracing will be used. By the way, I'm sorry if my voice sounds a bit scratchy. Uh, well, as regular viewers know, I'm still getting over being plagued, unfortunately. It just does not want to go. Anywho, um, so there's several things to take away here. The first of which is that we don't know exactly how AMD's implementation of ray tracing works. And I've heard multiple things. Some people have told me that the AMD implementation of ray tracing is really good, while others have told me it's not as good as NVIDIA's, which is really nice and helpful in terms of the um, consistency there. Either way, we don't know enough based upon the patents that emerged, and we also don't know what the software ecosystem for AMD is going to be like. And lastly, we don't know any particular uh, things that Microsoft are going to ask AMD to implement directly onto their silicon. What we can say is that looking over the uh, DirectX recent update, this was from uh, October last year, he says, checking the date really fast. Yes, tier 1.1 for ray tracing. And this introduces numerous things, including things like execute indirect for ray tracing. This allows the GPU basically to decide how many rays need to be spawned on the screen. There's also some other very interesting stuff like support additional shaders for the ray tracing PSO and also inline ray tracing. Mesh shaders as well, this is not related to uh, ray tracing, is going to be of critical importance. It's quite a radical change in how the uh, pipeline works, the graphics pipeline line works and should allow improved flexibility and performance particularly when it comes to geometry yes but that of course means higher frame rate and just more detail in scenes i would highly imagine that both of these things are going to be incorporated in the next generation of rdna given their release date and we can also bet that microsoft will be implementing these for xbox because well, I'm going to let you into a little secret here. This is between us. Microsoft's DirectX is uh, quite important to the Xbox. It's kind of in the name. Being serious for a moment, though, we will also allegedly see some details on variable rate shading implementation. I frankly believe that this is going to be of critical importance for the consoles. There have been quite a few patents for variable rate shading from AMD, Microsoft, as well as Sony. So, 
Will it improve performance by 30%? Well, once again, we don't know how it's implemented exactly with the next generation Radeon Silicon. Allegedly, this is going to be in areas which would be traditionally motion blurred. That would make sense because it's a post-process effect. And the idea of motion f uh, blur is to, of course, um, infer a sense of speed, right? But once again, I'm uh, shocking you here, but when you blur something, <laughs> there's less detail. So for them to basically add post-processing to blur a high detail image to a lower detail, you might as well just start out with lower detail to begin with and save yourself frame rate. Um, <laughs> I'm simplifying things a bit, but I'm just being kind of blunt. Uh, anyway, as for xCloud, I could kind of see that. After all, um, well, if you've got ray tracing in the next generation consoles, no one is going to want an experience where you are playing a game via the cloud, but the cloud implementation doesn't have ray tracing. The other thing as well is you might recall the ray tracing vision slide from AMD, which popped up last year, and they did specifically mention it is ray tracing. Now, there are a couple of ways to take that slide. The first is that it's for a next generation of graphics card, or you could also say that, no, it just means that it's the next logical step in graphics. And yeah, I suppose that would be more logical when you think about it. Furthermore, apparently we'll see three new GPUs revealed. Uh, apparently the fastest one is going to be 18 TFLOPs. So we can probably assume that that's going to be the 80 compute unit monstrosity. So what about these rumours? Do I feel they're true? Um... There are a couple of things which uh, do raise my eyebrow, not least of which they're saying that RDNA 2 was created exclusively for Microsoft. Um, and also when they're stating that there's 18 TFLOPs. As of the time that I last heard anything from my sources, the clock frequency and configuration of GPUs from AMD had not been decided. You might recall that at CES, I said that they're going to be the RX 6000 series. They were not going to be released in CES. They're going to be released at some point in summer. And some, a couple of people have even told me it might slip a little bit. But basically, AMD have not internally figured out stuff like clock frequency yet. My information could certainly be wrong. Um, certainly be wrong. But I don't know if AMD would be comfortable yet discussing the TFLOPs. Also, TFLOPs is not really something that is a great marketing term. They would probably rather push performance at this point. Maybe I'm wrong there. So, is it possibly right? I imagine a lot of the spirit of this is correct. And whether Phil Spencer shows up or not, and yeah, I can see a lot of this being accurate, just in terms of it makes sense. I personally believe, for example, deep learning AI We've seen Microsoft really push machine ML, which is something I want to discuss in the future. Um, VR, VRS. Also, yeah, definitely could understand that being there. I think it's going to be a paramount importance, and it will be used just like this. It's one of those rumours where there's nothing crazy there. There's nothing insane. Um, there are a few things which do raise my eyebrow, but of course, it's kind of ambiguous in some areas as well so yeah i i don't think it's necessarily true but we'll find we'll find out much more in just a few days so shifting now to nvidia and yet another gpu has been discovered in the geekbench database credit here i'm not quite sure how to pronounce this name uh w at r u what are you? I'm not certain how you would pronounce that. But anyway, this has got an absolute monstrous number of CUDA cores. Do you recall that recently a row game on Twitter discovered a GPU with 7,552 CUDA cores? And we were like, oh my god, that's a lot of CUDA cores. Well, how about 7,936 of the blighters? Yeah. Um, 32 gigabytes of VRAM ECC running at 1.2 gig 
uh, hertz. So most likely HBM2 4096-bit bus is running driver 44501, which I believe is an internal driver. I might be wrong on that, but I believe it is. 32 megabytes. I want to repeat that one more time. 32 megabytes of level 2 cache. That is ginormous. That is ridiculous amounts of level 2 cache. And this is, at least according to uh, Geekbench, not a multi-GPU board. So this is literally a single die, a single GPU die. This thing is just absolutely gargantuan. And the score here is 222,377. This stomps the scores that Rogaine found, which were already incredible. This thing scores, uh, well, uh, Rogaine one scored 184,000 points. So this is just quite frankly bonkers. Now, just so we're all clear here, this is a GPU which is for the data center. This is not a GPU which you're going to be slotting into your uh, PCIe slot at home anytime soon. But... This engineering sample is scoring around 100,000 more points than an Titan RTX. Bear in mind, these scores were from end of October. So, basically, four months has passed now. So, in theory, we should see silicon, which is working even better. I can only say that the next generation of NVIDIA cards is going to be absolutely crazy. If this is any indication at all, what we're going to be seeing for consumer-grade GPUs. Also, I want to go back to that 32 megabytes of level 2 cache. Typically, high-end GPUs from NVIDIA in terms of level 2 cache was like... mm, 6 megabytes or something... So we're looking at 32 megabytes now, which is just ginormous. It's going to eat up a lot of die space, we'd assume. But it also is quite interesting to me because one of the things I keep hearing about the next generation of RDNA is that we're also looking at a tremendous increase in the amount of cache on the chip. So it seems like NVIDIA and AMD there are having very similar uh, philosophies in their design. So it'll be interesting to see at least for AMD, what this actually looks like in a block diagram, uh, given we're looking at 80 compute units, and allegedly the die for the highest-end SKUs from AMD is going to be like 500mm squared. It's apparently pretty massive. Oh, and one final piece of news from NVIDIA, and that is that the GTC conference, uh, which NVIDIA actually ironically said was all that going ahead, no problems at all, yet it's been uh, cancelled. Well, not cancelled. It's basically just turning into an online event because of cough, cough, cough. You know what I'm talking about, but I can't say the word cough, cough, cough uh, that's going on. In video, though, the good news is if you did pay for your tickets, they will refund it, uh, which is great. But I imagine there's going to be a lot of disappointed people regardless. But I think that just about does it for this particular video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Normal stuff if you did. Like, share, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.